Hello folks, it's Rich here, we're straight back. So we unboxed this, I say we, it was me. And then we watched, <laughs> so I just a little while ago, it's not long come out of the box. So caveats here, it's not in perfect tune. <laughs> strings need a bit more of a stretch, but they need replacing really. Which strings they are, jump ones. So for those who may not have seen that, this is a vintage the brand of a V58 Jerry Donoghue um, telly. Now he's also got a proper Fender one himself, but this is his vintage signature model. It's an older body. It's of medium heft. It's certainly not heavier than my Squire Classic Vibe. It's not a tank, which is nice. Uh, yeah, older body. It's got a maple neck, which feels pretty much un finished certainly on the fretboard on the back it feels a bit like a squire affinity kind of feel medium jumbo nickel fret i like that that's my preferred fret type actually i much prefer that to anything else and to my great surprise they're not sharp like a lot of vintage guitars i say a lot about nine out of my 192 in total <laughs> and they've usually got the sharp frets and haven't been that good but these ones are all right I don't know whether they're level or not. There's no buzzing at the moment, time will tell, and obviously when I take it to Tom at some point. The action out of the box is perfectly playable. Can't see that very well. It's got a seven and a quarter inch radius neck, which is surprising to me because it actually feels fairly broad here. It's a bit, a bit wider than my Squire Classic Vibe is. The neck itself in terms of thickness is similar in feel to the Classic Vibe. It's thinner than a Mexican Fender, so that might appeal to some people. So it's not super chunky, but it's certainly not skinny. So look, the neck has got hardly any, any tilt back here. It's got a graphite nut, which is a nice touch. And I've been, the Wilkinson Cluzon sort of style tuning pegs are actually really smooth. They're some of the nicest I've felt for a little while, these. The resistance on all of them feels about the same. They're smooth and you don't need much of a turn and boop, it's, it's moving the string. So they feel surprisingly good. It's got the ease lock system on these which is two holes you put the string in one way and out the other and twist it around the last one i had with these it's a nightmare getting the strings out so i didn't bother i just used them like a, a regular post just put it down the middle and wound it around so yeah and then the, the interesting thing really is, is the pickup configuration isn't it i've just scribbled it down here so you've got five positions on here you've got neck then you've got neck uh, with a special capacitor and you've got neck and bridge in parallel and you've got neck and bridge with a capacitor and a resistor in a controlled reverse phase whatever that means and then you've got the bridge which has got special pole pieces so it claims it's all that custom design the idea being that you've got lots of different tones to it. it's a strat a pick up here so you've got stratty tones You've got slightly meaty, almost humbucker type tones, and then you've got regular telly tones. Now, as you know, I'm not a great player of the guitar, I just like the guitars. There are lots of reviews on this of people playing it much better than me, so take that as you will. I've got the Catalyst Line 6 60 watt here, it's on half a watt mode with the channel volume and the master volume up to the top. The gain is on three eighths of the way up. I've got the bass up a bit, the mix down a bit, the treble. On the, at the middle and the presence up a tiny bit. I don't like too trebly. So, for, first thing I'm going to do, so yeah, it's a little bit out of tune, that's just the way it is. I've just tuned it up. The tone pot. Works pretty well. Now, I like a tone pot on a tele bridge pickup so that's good and the volume knob also these knobs they're, they're slightly scratchy the feel as if the actual knob is all, all the way down onto the uh, onto the little plate here they're not, they're not, they're not stiff they're not smooth this is a Paul Reed Smith pick which with an H on it it's a heavy pick so it's not super fat like a yeah it's not super thick but not skinny skinny so obviously if you had a thinner pick it would sound brighter than it is so this is on the the neck then no reverb no delay nothing play some chords in a minute so. 
really loud as well. Uh, that's got a lot of bite to it, a lot of mid sound to it. Go back here and we'll just play some basic chords. Someone that's a bit darker sounding. Uh, let's just go straight to 
a metal pedal on noise gate on, which is a built in feature on the catalyst, which I really like. Oh, it's going to be loud. Christ, 11 minute video, sorry about that. So uh, my first impressions and takeaway, uh, the so-called seven and a quarter inch radius, I'm sure it is, doesn't feel any less playable than a nine and a half at all. I, I just can't feel the difference. It's set up pretty well, so the action's all right. But yeah, uh, I can't tell the difference really between positions one and two or four or five, depending on which way around you're looking at it or which way it should be particularly. But you definitely got a stratty kind of tone here, and you've got some oomph the oomph back here. It's all pretty bright, which is telly-esque, but the tone knob works well, so that's easily controllable. So, yeah, uh, you know, overall, I mean, Vintage are a funny brand, aren't they? They, they make some decent stuff. Their QC, as I mentioned earlier, can be really iffy, and there are lots of other options for on full price. I mean, 250 for this, more than happy to pay 250 for it. The full price of 400 and something odd pounds, 450. No, I just wouldn't do that. As someone's already commented, I would definitely get a Classic 5, which I've already got, of course. And it's like the same with their V6, their Strats. Nice as they are, I've had a few of those as well. Just wouldn't pay the full price for them. I, I, I would rather have a Squire. If, if I was going to pay full price, I'd rather have a full price Squire or even a second-hand Fender. Because one of the other things with, with vintage guitars, and if you're like me and you buy and sell the guitars every five minutes, they just don't hold the value, they're terrible. It's not only that they don't hold the value, they're actually just hard to sell. So if you're gonna buy a vintage guitar, you've gotta keep it and love it, especially if you pay full price for it, or just be prepared. If you paid 450 quid for this new, if you can find someone to buy it, you'll probably sell it for 150. Just the way it is. So yeah, let me know if you've got one or what you think of it. I uh, don't know if any of that was helpful, but I say, having had lots and lots of guitars and lots and lots of tellies, the, I like it. The the very pale, washed out sort of blondy colour won't be for everyone, and certainly the very pale neck won't be for everyone. I'm not wild about that level of pale neckness, really, but no denying that feels like a nice guitar to play. It's got some great tones. So there we go. I look forward to your comments.